Hi. This instructional video is about ratios and proportions. Proportions and ratios. We're going to find out what should the variable be on the left side of the equation so that if you plug in the same thing for the right side, it will equal the left and the right. So how do you figure this out? Well, back in pre-algebra, you may have learned how to do a thing called cross multiplication. So we do the same thing over here. So let me model this one for you. Number one, we're going to cross multiply. It really doesn't matter which is which, but I'll just go from this way. The r plus 4 with the denominator 5. And so it looks like 5 times the quantity of x plus 4. Now on the right side, we will have 3 times r. That's simply 3r. Now let's do the distributive property. We get 5r plus a 20 is equal to 3r. Now I'm going to move that 20 over to the right side and then I'm going to move that 3r to the left side by doing the opposite to each other. So here we get 20 additive inverse cancels out. And on the right side I'm going to go minus 3r. I'm going to take that to both sides of the equation. So we have 2r is equal to negative 20. And to solve for r I divide the coefficient 2. And voila! We have negative 10. Now how do I know if r should be the negative 10? That will make the left side and the right side equal each other. Well here's how you check. Go back and plug it in. So we have negative 10 plus the 4 over the 3. Will that equal if I have negative 10 over the 5? Well on the left side negative 4 plus 10 is negative 6 over the 3. And on the left right side I haven't done anything yet so here I go. Negative 6 over 3 reduces to negative 2. Does that equal negative 10 over 5, which is also negative 2? Yeah, so it works out. So r does equal negative 10. And it will make the left and the right side of the equation exactly the same. Now, why don't you try numbers 2 and 3? All right, so you said, well, I like what you did, so I'll go ahead and cross multiply as well. So here you get 6 times the quantity w plus 4. And that equals what you get on the right side when you cross multiply this way. 2w times negative 5. Now if you had that switched around, it really doesn't matter. The commutative property says you get the same product. However, we do have to do the distributive property. So you get 6w plus 24. And on the right side, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10w. Now let's move that 24 over by doing its additive inverse, minus 24 to both sides of the equation. So on the left side, the 24s cancel out. We get 6w equals negative 10w minus the 24. And let's move the negative 10w over by doing its additive inverse. It's by adding 10w. And when we combine the like term on the left side of the equation, we get 16w equals negative 24. Now I'm going to divide the coefficient 16 to both sides of the equation. So I get w is equal to... Well, the greatest common factor between 24 and 16 is 8. So it's negative, and 8 goes into 24 three times, and 8 goes into 16 two times. So w is negative 3 over 2. And number 3, same thing again. It's going to come out a little different, but it can be done. So we're going to cross multiply the u with the 2u minus 1. So we get u times the quantity of 2u minus the 1. On the right side, this one's easy. 3 times 1, which is 3. Do my distributive property, we get 2u squared minus u times 1 is u is equal to 3. Hmm. I wonder how I could solve this one. It's going to come out kind of funky. Uh, let's see. That's a u. So, I know. Doesn't this look like a ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, the quadratic equation. So let's make it by bringing the 3 over to the other side of the equation. So we end up with 2u squared minus the u minus the 3 equals to 0. And I just quickly make, made a check just to make sure I don't make a mistake. It seems we can factor this. So we're going to use a thing called ac factor. What times what is the coefficient 2? That's going to be 1 and 2. What times what is the, the c term 3? 
that would be 1 and 3. And how can we mix and match? So if we took the product and add it together, we get a negative 1 in the beginning? In the middle, I mean? Well, you have to go 2 times 1, which is 2. 1 times 3, which is 3. And to get a negative 1 coefficient, the bigger number has to be a negative. The small number has to be a positive. And to get a 2, you have to go 2 times positive 1. 1 times negative 3. So we're ready to put them in a factor form. The binomials that multiplies to become 2u squared minus u minus 3 is u, 1u, and 2u. The 1 has to multiply with the 3, but they cannot be in the same binomial because distributive property don't work like that. So 1 times 3, the 3 has to come over here, and remember it was a minus 3. And then that means the plus 1 comes over here. Now we're still solving, so we have to use a zero product property. That means take each of the binomial and set it to zero and solve it. In this case, you subtract 1. One of the answers is u is equal to negative 1. The other possible solution, which turn, turns out to be a quadratic equation, is when you add 3 and divide the 2. So you get u is equal to 3 over 2, and that's the other part of the solution. It's a parabola. All right, so now that you see how that works, why don't we try? Okay, now these are a little spicy. I'll do number four for you. And you could compare that with number five and six that's coming up. You could try those. So number four, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use cross multiplication. So here I go. From the left top to the bottom, you don't have to go that way first. You could go bottom left to the right top. <laughs> it's totally up to you. So I'm going to end up with the two binomials, x minus 3, times another binomial, x plus 6. And that equals whatever I get on the right side when I cross multiply, x times x, which is x squared. Now do my full method, x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18, is equal to x squared. Combine all the like terms, and you know what? Let me do this simultaneously. Let me bring the x squared over at the same time. So I get a 0 on the right side of the equation. So as a result, the degree of 2, they cancel out completely. 6x minus 3x is 3x. Minus the 18 is equal to 0. Let's solve it. Let's move the 18 over by adding both sides, additive inverse of the negative 18. So I get 3x is equal to 18. Now I'm going to get rid of the coefficient 3 by dividing that 3. So the final answer is x is equal to 6. Ta-da! Yeah! I want you to try numbers 5 and 6. Alright. So it looks like a mess, but it comes out nice and clean. So for example, uh, this is too easy. <laughs> 2 times 1 is 2. And then 6x plus 1 times 2x. Let's write that out. Let's put the, a smaller factor here. I just like it that way for some reason. 2x times 6x plus 1. Let's do the distributive property. I get 2 is equal to 2x times 6x is 12x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Let's bring the 2 over at the same time because it looks like it's going to become a quadratic equation again. So we get 12x squared plus 2x minus a 2 equals 0 on the left side, which I'm going to move it to the right side. I just like it like that. <laughs> now, there's pretty peculiar. These three terms of the quadratic equation, they all seem to be divisible by a 2. So let's go ahead and factor that out. 2 times 6x squared would bring me back to 12x squared. 2 times x will bring me back to 2x, and 2 times negative 1 will bring me back to negative 2. And I quickly stepped away to make sure that maybe I could factor this, and it turns out I could. 2 is going to be part of my answer, at least for the factoring part, and it turns out 2 times 3 would give me the 6. 1 times 1 would give me the negative 1. And how do I multiply where its products, if I combine, they would become a 1 in the middle? 
Well, 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. And then bigger number has to be a positive this time. Small number has to be a negative. That means two, 3 times plus 1. 2 times negative 1. So the factor form is 2 times 2x and 3x. 2x must multiply with a negative 1, but it cannot be in the same binomial. Negative 1 comes over here, plus 1 goes over there. Now I'm going to take, identify all the x terms, which there's only two here, not that one. And then I'm going to use a zero product property by setting each of those binomial into zero and solve it. So if I subtract 1, divide 2, one of the answers is going to be negative 1 over 2. If I add 1 and divide 3, the other answer for my parabola, the roots, is going to be one-third positive. So there's number 5. And finally, number 6. It's not too bad, is it? We're going to multiply 6 with the x squared plus 2. And let's write that out. And that's going to equal the right side where I multiply the negative 2 with the term 19x. Let's do my distributive property. 6x squared plus 6 times 2 is 12 on the left side. On the right side, negative 2 times 19 is what? What's that? 38. Double the 19 is 38. And it's negative. And it looks like it's going to be another quadratics. So let's bring the negative 38x over to the left side by doing its additive inverse. That's by adding the uh, positive 38x to both sides. So it becomes a 0 on the right side of the equation. So I end up with 6x squared plus 38x plus 12 is equal to 0. Is that factorable? You know what? I'm not even going to step by. Let's just do this. Let's see. What are the multiples of 6? It could be 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. I'm doing the AC factor right now. What are the multiples that will be 12? Well, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Now, my gut feeling says, but it turns out to be 2 and 6 with 1 and 6. And here's the reason why. 6 times 6 is 36. 1 times 2 is 2. And if they were both positive, wouldn't that become 38 in the middle? Yeah, and that means the C terms 2 and 6, they both must be positive as well. So we could factor now. What are the binomials that will give you 6x squared plus 38, all that stuff? <laughs> It'll be, uh, let's see, uh, 1x and 6x. And 1x has to multiply with the 2, so that comes over here. And 6 has to multiply with the 6, so that goes over here. That equals a 0, but wait! Yeah, you know what, let's just go. I was going to factor out the 2 out of this one, but we could keep going. So let's take each of those binomials and use a zero product property to solve for x. And it'll come out anyway. Here, minus 6 to both sides, one of the answers is x is equal to negative 6. Here, you subtract 2 and divide 6, you get x is equal to negative 2 6, or simply negative 1 third. There it is. Enjoy.